Should we talk about MP safety? Yes. Because um, more money announced to try and look after them. Peter, explain really why it is that there is much more increased concern about MP safety and then what Harriet Harman had to say yesterday. Well, there's a hugely growing issue in the fact mm. we heard and you interviewed Tobias Elwood about the fact that there was a mob of pro-Palestinian protesters, peaceful, but outside his home, which he found very intimidating, as did his mm. family, who, of course, haven't chosen a career in politics. We have three female MPs who have police guards. Usually it's only uh, about five or six cabinet ministers who have full-time police guards. We have uh, people like Lisa Nandy saying that she keeps a police alarm with her at all times and now we have a new scheme announced by uh, James Cleverly he's talking to the National Police Chiefs Council today so the Home Secretary talking about spending 31 million pounds which is actually about half the budget for actual MP salaries I did a quick back of the envelope calculation on the way in this morning and that would pay for about 350 MPs that is just on MPs security alone in terms of trying to keep them safe because MPs live this weird life where they are in one of the most secure buildings in the country in Parliament half the week and the rest of the week they're in their uh, constituencies usually they're at all sorts of events they're the guests of honour they're always known about it mm. but really interestingly you mentioned Harriet Harman there uh, long-serving Labour MP former Deputy Leader of the Labour Party who said that she thinks that there should be a provision for MPs to work from home do it via Zoom essentially in the way that they did during Covid that I think is a very sad indictment well, of where we are Paul, in terms of Paul, Paul, in this country Paul Yannotti she, she called uh, yesterday to evacuate Parliament let MPs work from home due to protesters um, uh, <laughs> Most people would say that's surrendering to a mob. I mean, let's be perfectly honest. It, well, it, we're no. supposed to be a democracy, man. Well, we are, but obviously what's happening is our democracy is being skewed by these protests. And it's not just in London. You talk to people, as I do, all over the country, have had fundraisers cancelled, they're not going out knocking on doors anymore, hustings are being abolished for the uh, well, general why do you election. Think we, what, what Genuine do you... fear of violence and threat. You know, it's a, it's a real issue there, so it's skewing how we do why our politics. Why do you think it happens, then? Why do you think the I think, mob well, seemingly I think, there's a, I think there's a lot of people out there who uh, hate our system, um, who are anti-West, who I think for Gaza is a, a trigger, but that's not the main reason they're doing it. And I don't think... This is not religious, by the way. A lot of these are white, woke, Guardian Easter types who just want to have a go at the Labour Party and the Tory Party too. But, it, you know, it, it's people who are trying to make democracy different. And it's Can I ask you a question which probably doesn't... Genuinely dangerous. Probably doesn't sound right, cos I... I agree that we should have a right to protest. I think it's yeah. absolutely right that MPs, a democracy, should be secure. I tried to make the point just then, and I would no way condone anything like this. Do you not sort of understand people's frustrations with the political system and the people that represent them in this country? But if you if you have those disagreements, you can write to your MP, you can petition, you can stand for office, yeah. you, know, you can do all kinds of things in our system yeah, because it's a good system and it doesn't have to be you know mob rule, which is what these people are trying to... And I, I think that's the point. I, I mean, I don't actually agree with Harriet Harm. Maybe we need to look at more security, this 31 million deal today, but... Um, I ask you this, Peter Cardwell, who the hell would want a career as an MP now? Well, exactly, and this <laughs> is the point. If we keep if we keep saying all MPs are horrible, money-grabbing, dreadful people, and look, there's plenty of evidence of that. Well, Scott Benton has given us some of that evidence. Yes, yeah. I'll lie, give us some money, um, brilliant. There, There is... You know, we're not going to get good people standing for office, and if you're going to be intimidated, if you're going to have every single thing you've ever said online poured over, mm. if you're going to have people turn up at your house and intimidate your kids... Yeah. Uh, for example, I mean, you're not going to get the right people coming into politics. There's a brilliant book about this by Isabel Hardman called uh, Why We Get the Wrong Politicians. Highly recommended. Second best book about uh, politics written in the last five years. So, What the, was the first one? Um, the Secret Life of Special Advisors by Peter Cardwell. Okay, um, the other, the, but the serious point is there are, as Paul correctly says, there are many people from many backgrounds. Just Up Oil, for example, saying they were going to occupy, um, they were going to occupy MPs' homes, for example. Yeah. We have the real threat from Islamism as well, which would destroy our way of life, which is very sadly a significant part of pro-Palestinian protests, which, will, which are happening every fortnight. The bill for that, absolutely huge. Metropolitan Police under the most pressure they've been under since the Olympics. This is a very serious problem in this country. Mm -hmm. We need to talk about this.